Hi everyone and welcome back to this AutoCAD tutorial. On our last lesson, we took a look on how to create an additive hatches and how to modify the scale of line types. On today's video, we are going to learn how to create our own custom line type, so let's start. Here I put up a new file different from our project so I can explain you as clear as possible the process of defining a custom line type. As I mentioned to you on our last lesson, a line type is made by the repetition of elements dashes, dots, text, or even symbols. So basically what you need to do to create a line type is to define the sequence of repetition of these elements. This definition is not going to be input directly on AutoCAD but into the line type settings file. This is a default file that comes with AutoCAD and contains all the default descriptions for the standard line types. You can find this file by following this path that I wrote down here or if not, you can give a try to make a general search on your computer looking for the file uh, extension. That way you will find this file. So I have it open up. And as you can see, it contains a lot of information, but I'm going to break it down for you guys. So basically, a line type definition is made up by two lines. One starting with an asterisk symbol, then the name of the line type followed by a brief description and a short sample and then the second line is starting with a letter A and then a sequence of values and these values actually define the type of element and their dimensions so let's go back to AutoCAD so I can show you how this works so here we have a graphic example of how a uh, line type definition works so if you want to define a dash, you will specify a positive value and this value will correspond to the length of the dash. So for example, this dash here has a size of one unit. So we specify the value of one. Then to define a blank space, you will use a negative value and then the length of this blank space. Also, if you want to specify a point, you will use a zero value. And you go on this way, specifying the different types of elements and the different values for this length or size. You can input from 2 to 12 different values in total to the final line type. Then this definition will be repeated starting back again from the first point of the sequence. So for example, this line definition goes from here to here and then it starts over and over throughout the length of the line. This is a very simple line type. Now let's take a look into a more complex one, one containing a text for example. Here we have an example of a line displaying the text TEL that later on will represent the position and the path of the telephone line in our project. Now the, basically the principles to define these values are the same as we just saw before. The only thing that's changed is the way you will input the value for the text. To do that, well, you will start as well with the letter A, then the values of the first part of the sequence, but then when you just want to input the value of the text, you will start with a bracket symbol, followed by the text written in between quotation marks, then you will write down the name of the text style that you're going to use, followed by a scale factor. This factor will scale the size of the text. Then by a rotation factor that will rotate the text. And then you will have the X and Y axis uh, offset value. And these values will modify the position of your text according to the line. And then you will close the bracket symbol and continue with the rest of the sequence of your line type. Probably you will have to give a couple of tests to find out the correct values for the X and Y offset as working with text might get tricky at this part. Now that we have both definitions for these line types, we can add them to our line types file. And to do so, we're going to go down to the bottom of this file where we're going to find the user defined line types area to input this information. And as you can see, I already added both definitions and you may recognize the different parts of the line type definition. The first line starting with the asterisk, followed by the name, the description and the, and the sample. And the second line starting with the letter A and the sequence of values. 
Now, before saving and loading this file, you have to be very careful to leave a blank space at the end. If you don't do that, you will not be able to load this file into AutoCAD and work with your new line type definitions. Okay, so now let's go to AutoCAD and a quick way to add these line types is just to go on a ribbon, select the line type uh, uh, part of the ribbon, the, click on other. This will display the line type manager. Also, you can access by typing in LT on your keyboard. Then we're gonna click on load. Here we're gonna look for the file containing these descriptions, select it and open it. Here we're gonna look for the line types we just made, so custom dash. And down below, we have the telephone one. Let's click on OK and OK. Now let's go ahead and draw a couple of lines to give them a test. So let's select the custom dash line type, PL enter for polyline. And let's start just drawing some lines to see how the pattern is being repeated. Now let's change for the telephone line type. PL again, enter. And let's draw another random line. Now if we look closer to the line, you can see how the text is displayed in their correct position in the sequence of the elements. Now, as you remember on our last lesson, I mentioned you the tool of line type generation. So you can modify if the repetition of elements of this line type definition is going to be made by segments or it's going to take in account the whole length of the line. So let's select both line types, go to the properties, and let's choose here on line type generation, enable, and as you can see, the position of the text and the dots and the dashes have been changed according to the whole length of the line. Okay, so there you go. Now you know how to create your own line type. So go on and give it a try. And on our next lesson, we're going to learn how to create our own hatch patterns. So thanks again for watching and stay tuned for more upcoming tutorials.